Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of the Mystical Ninja. And the last part we started off the game and now we're in level 3, the amusement park. You can murder those guys senselessly. They actually don't attack you, they're just there to die. But this level is actually kind of just here as a breather because there's no real point to it in the story, so... That's a bit odd. Also, I hate these enemies. They only appear this one time, but they can really be surprisingly hard to dodge. In fact, any enemies that throw projectiles kind of suck. Also, hidden lollipop there for $100. Now, I call this place a breather level, not just because it doesn't do much in the game's story, but because there's no real difficulty here. The, some of the enemies, like that one I just killed, can be kind of beefy, like three hits. But for the most part, this place is a compilation of all the mini games the game has to offer. Well, most of them. I'd say maybe... 70% of them. I mean, it's amusement park. What do you expect there to be? Some really satanic cult? No, that's just the clowns. And when I say minigames, I mean it. This screen in particular is really interesting. Though here's something interesting. This is the Diary Keeper. This is more or less this game's save system. Uh, there's some in almost every stage, but as you can see, it's an extremely long password. And I hate them. I hate it. It's not the worst password system out there. I've seen much worse, but ugh. Welcome! Do you enjoy quizzes? One play is $100. This is a good way to make money, actually. More or less, you have to answer three questions correctly in a row before anyone else does. And then you get uh, $200 in return. I know most of the questions just based off their answers. Like, uh, I get the same one twice in a row, almost, actually. Which is, what was the, what was the ghost in the boss fight of the first level? It was a woman. The biggest problem with it is that if you get the question wrong, you lose a turn, so, yeah. You do have to buzz in pretty quickly, but for the most part, it's pretty simple things. A lot of the questions are either, uh, stupid answer, possible answer, and real answer, like most multiple choice questions, actually. After doing it, you get $300, which is more like $200 since you had to spend $100 to partake in it. If you wanted to spam this place, it could be a pretty decent place to make money. I have other ways, though. Mind you, you don't really need money in the long run past, like, level... 7? So yeah, but this is the real big attraction. Welcome, welcome. This is the game center. All games are $100 here. What do you want to play? Well, there's two things you can play here. More or less, Tear Down the Wall, which is Arkanoid, and Gradius. That's right, for $100, you can play a port of Gradius from the NES, though I think it's more based off uh, the Gradius 3 engine. And I'm gonna speed it up because I was here for a bit. I don't actually know how far this game goes. I actually have never beaten the first level in this version of it, so I don't know. You only get one life, so... Make a count, I guess? You don't get anything for beating it, too, so it's just kind of here. But it's Gradius. It functions in all its sorts of things, which really does remind me. I really do have to do Gradius 3 at some point because I really love Gradius 3. Especially its soundtrack. But I'm surprised, actually. I don't think I've ever made it that far in the game before now. At least in this version of it. Please come back again. But yeah, I like this area. A lot of nice little hidden mini games like that. It's pretty cool. The level is overall not that long, too. I think there's only two screens left, if even. Also, hidden enemies here. I don't know how the hell that person was hiding behind that. There are some hidden mini games in here that I don't go after, like some previous ones we've seen. Uh, some of the job mini games you can do to get money. I just want to show off the unique ones. But this is the concentration game. This is more or less one of those memory games you probably played in like Mario Party at some point or another. You choose who goes first and then they flip a card over and then another card they hope it matches and then they get points. This does not make a good way to make money. That was horrible grammar but still. Because I don't think I've ever gotten a single sense off this thing because the things are so randomly placed that I cannot tell what to do. I do believe they are in set arrangements, like there's like eight set arrangements, but I've never had the time to memorize them. I almost had a win there, though. You get money based on how many cards you got. If you get certain kinds of cards, you get, uh, also, uh, some extra stuff. You can get some money out of it, but that's not really worth it to me. There is one in here that's kind of worth it, but, oh boy, it can be a pain to get to work right. Welcome! Welcome to the racetrack. Come on in. This is horse racing. The way it works is you see those numbers down in the bottom, like the 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4? That is more or less the horse's numbers. 
since I just bet five on three and five, I will get my reward based off the lots that's earlier that amount times a certain number. If the numbers three and five comes in first and second. It can be five, three, or three, five, as long as those two come in first and second. However, unless you're using safe states, this is not a good way to make money. In fact, I think I've only won that legitimately once, if even. I could have dreamed that for all I know, because a lot of my game dreams have a strange amount to do with video games, and it's honestly kind of scary. And with that, you're more or less done with the level. Then we just have this random vertical section. This is like one of two sections in the game that does this, by the way. And then you're out of there, but random octopi, okay. Also, if you start moving down at all, the screen locks back down. Oh my god, giant octopus. I don't know what to say to that, other than the fact that it looks like the squib guy, or whatever his name was, back in Super Paper Mario. Weird. This is more or less this, this stage's boss fight, but as you can see, it is the easiest boss in the game. Because once you head north from here as well, we're done with the level. Kind of... Oddly designed there, but I'll take it all the same. The Otafu Army's hideout is in the center of Yamato. On the way to their hideout, Kid Ying and Dr. Yang have skillfully passed through a haunted maze filled with tricks and traps. Oh, have to skillfully pass through. My bad, I am horrible at reading, ah! Either way, with that, we're on to Warlock Zone 4. Defeat Otafu! Okay, then. This is actually another fairly short and easy stage if you know what to do. Let's talk to some people first. Since the Otafu army has come, our lives have become much more difficult. You had what? An army making lives difficult? You don't say. Well, in Japan at least. And let's see what the person in here has to say. Just between you and me, if you use the command 2 up, 2 down, left, right, left, right, BA, nothing will happen. Ah, crap, the Konami code does nothing, guys. We're screwed. Uh, I actually, yeah, they do mean that. I think even if you're playing the Gradius, you can't actually use the Konami code in that, so, yeah. I thought one thing that actually I do want to mention that I like that this game does is that, first off, it has level-exclusive enemies, which, cool. Also, that guy right there, uh, he'll steal certain items if you get touched by him, so don't let him touch you. Oh, hey, an extra life you can buy here. Uh, Goemon and Evie Samaru actually have different extra lives you have to buy, though. I do want to buy that pizza really quick. Uh, the pizza, more or less, when I lose all my health, I'll get a certain amount re uh, recovered. That's an item that that umbrella guy right there can steal, so don't let him touch you. Those awful soldiers of the Otafu army have defaced our great leader. They will certainly be punished for this. Well then, you hit puberty really quickly there, sir. But yeah, this house actually does have a, another hidden passage in it. Hidden passages I actually really like in this game because, for the most part, they can actually serve as shortcuts to get past certain areas. Uh, I know for a fact they make this level and the next one fairly short, at least in terms of the beat em up sections. Also, that's actually something I should mention that I like about this game. Uh, obviously, every level has some exclusive enemies, but... Especially in, like, the outside, the platforming level beat em up sections, uh, they actually slowly introduce enemies as you go through, and uh, at a good pace, too. Because even at the final level, we'll still be seeing enemies from, like, level 1. Also, don't hit the deer. Uh, the deer can damage you, but if you hit it, you lose, I think, $10. Which is more than enough to be like, no, thank you. I like keeping my money, thank you very much. By the way, this right here, if I recall, is actually the Otafu Army's base. It's actually very easy to find if you know where to go. The levels aren't even that big, too, for the most part. Hello again, raccoon dog tanuki thing. You know, tanuki statues are really scary, terrifying in real life. Why? They've got giant testicles. Giant testicles. And if you look closely, the sprite in this game has them. I'm not sure if you've noticed this through history, video games, or everything, really. But Japan is weird. And we love them for it. Though, mind you, this isn't the weirdest thing I've ever seen from Japan. It's up there. I, uh, some of the things in this game are up there. I can tell you that for a fact. But for the most part, this is actually fairly tame. 
Either way, this is the Otofu Army's bi uh, palace's big gimmick. There are switches like that you can jump on to rotate the area around. See, look, we have to go up there in order to progress, but we can't get up there for the moment. So, we need to find a way to rotate the area 180 degrees in order to get up there. Thankfully, though, platforming sections in this game are actually very linear, so you don't have to worry about it. There's rarely a time where there's a split path. There's one I know for a fact coming up, but you don't have to worry about that much for much because uh, the door you should take, if you talk to everyone in the towns especially, is very obvious. You know, when I first played this, I had actually already played Castlevania 4, and I thought that this kind of gimmick was kind of a ripoff of that one level where you hang on to that ring for a good amount of time and watch the area rotate. But then the thing is, first off, they're both Konami games, and secondly, they were technically probably in development around the same time because this was a July release, and Castlevania 4 was an October release of the same year, 1991. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was actually some collaboration there, honestly. By the way, falling down somehow puts us through a wall. Or something. I'm not sure how this entire area is going to work. Because if we fall down there and then we go back that direction, we somehow end up in this area. Don't know how. And there we got a, an elephant. As I mentioned last part, those are a checkpoint, but I should probably elaborate on them a bit. You see, the thing is in levels, when you die, you're sent back to the raccoon dog, to the start of them all. However, if you have an elephant, when you die, you have a choice. You can send yourself back to any of the elephants you found or to the raccoon dog. I guess you could go back to the raccoon dog as a choice if you wanted to and like to get more gold or something, I suppose, but it's not worth it to me. Plus, this game already has limited lives as it is. If you look just below Goemon's health bar, you can see the total amount we have. Three. Although, I forget if zero counts. Don't go in that door to the right. If you do, you're sent back to the beginning of the level. Well, at the beginning of the platforming section, the raccoon dog. We want to head left. Do not ever go through the door on the right. And now we're in this section. This is kind of a lottery section. You step on certain platforms and they'll fall, causing the lottery to go up in the front. You can get cats, which gives you the gray cats that upgrade your weapon. You can get hearts, which gives you recovery hearts. You can get an X, which is some amount of enemies. You can get, And then you can get bombs that fall down from the ceiling. Thankfully, I got nothing but good luck. That has never happened before in my life. And with that, we're at the boss. Um, sumo wrestler is trying to spirit bomb me. These guys are very easy. Uh, they actually do have a kind of a shared life bar system going on there. So if you kill one, the other will still live on. Except the ball bounces around a lot more violently. When you kill the second one, though, is when the boss really starts. Because that guy's soul enters this really creepy face. And now the boss fight begins. He's not that hard because you can easily bounce him back just using the yo-yo. But his big hitbox makes jumping a really bad idea in this area, and avoiding him can actually be very tricky. This guy scared me as a kid, though. Ugh. If you know what to do, this boss fight can be really easy, but if you don't, it can be surprisingly tricky. Your body parts are in the wrong place, dude. Don't know if you know that. But this is actually a really hard phase to dodge because his attack pattern does change depending on what you do. Once you get down to the last fourth of his health bar, though, the boss changes drastically. When you hit him, he'll slowly increase. This gets to the point where you actually can no longer stand there yet and need to duck. Yeah, get out of my face. Thank you. And, oh, ouch. Hello there. I'm Ninja Woman Yai. Yay? Yai? What did, what, how would you pronounce that? I was captured by the Otofu army while looking for counterfeiters. It seems that you, too, are looking for something. You should seek the help of the wise men of Iga. Igarashi? Bloodstain's already out? What? When they reached the Otofu army's hideout, they could not find Princess Yuki. A girl named Yai or Yai or whatever told them to seek the guidance of the gold wise man who lives in the famous village of Iga. I would not be surprised if Iga is a reference to Igarashi, the guy who helped with a lot of the Castlevania games. Because, you know, he was an employee of Konami for a while. Either way, welcome to Warlock Zone 5, Ninja Castle. But with that, I'm going to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 3, we'll be heading into those next few stages. See you guys then.